Let me say um, three things about the mood. The first is that it started off as something aspirational. Um, in 1992, when the mood started, there was no African court on human and people's rights. And as you know, the idea of the MOOT is that students appear before members of and others making up an African Court of Human and People's Rights. So the MOOT started to propose essentially the possibility that such a court would exist. And um, we hope to say that in these six years that we were busy with the MOOT, the collective participation of those early MOOTs somehow willed the mood, uh, the, the African court, rather, into existence. Because, as I think most of the lawyers here would know, in 1998, the African Union's predecessor, the OAU, actually adopted a protocol, a legal instrument to create the African court. So that was 1998. But that didn't mean that we had a court. A number of states, 15 minimum, was required to make the court uh, protocol enter into force. And that was only attained in 2004. So it is relatively recent that the court actually exists. In 2006, the court actually gave its uh, first judgment. So it's been there for a decade. Um, in other words, the history of the moot court competition is also, in a sense, an urging, an aspiration to see an idea that was um, an aspiration at the time turn into something that became a reality. Fifteen states were required to have the protocol enter into force. Today, there are 30 states. And we are happy to say that Ghana not only is one of those 30 states, but states may also accept direct access to the African court. And Ghana is one of the few countries that have actually accepted this direct access. So Ghana clearly is a, is a leading light in terms of uh, the support uh, for the African court, and I think it's very appropriate that the mood should, in a sense, then come back to this country. The second is, once the mood has now seen the emergence of the African court in actual fact, the main purpose of the mood turned to creating a new generation of lawyers who will actually be there, ready, inspired, and capacitated to bring cases to the African Court on Human and People's Rights. So the role of the MOOT, we could say, is now more inspirational and educational. Um, so we can talk here of a pyramid. And uh, I think the idea is that the MOOT is very pedagogically soundly rooted. Because the learning pyramid, as I'm sure many of you know, has at its pinnacle the least kind of permeating levels of knowledge acquisition. As you know, if you sit in a class and passively listen, you don't really um, in take in, and the knowledge does not really become part of you. But at the bottom of the pyramid would be the deepest, deepest levels of uh, immersion into knowledge. And the deepest levels would come from practical application through real life experiential learning. And that is essentially what the Moot Court competition tries to do. So it is pedagogically at the deepest levels of knowledge acquisition, understanding, and making knowledge applicable. But there's another pyramid that is at play here, and that is, in terms of the moot, when we will be here in August next year, we'll have participants to by university, hopefully up to 70 or 80 universities from across the continent may be participating. And we'll see the cream of the crop, if you like. But we should never forget that in the process, at each of the universities, there would have been preliminary rounds or knock-off rounds, knock-out rounds, where many, many, many more students would have participated. So if you think of the pyramid in this sense, the pinnacle would be represented at the Moot Court Finals in Accra in 2018. But in the process, there's much more permeation of this capacity building and learning, and we hope that at each of the universities that are present here, you will, many students will participate, and in that process, the uh, two finalists that will come to the final would um, emerge, but only through uh, a, a system that is very participatory and competitive. The third issue I would mention is that the moot court competition has certainly become institutionalized. 
Now, Professor Kwashiga mentioned that I was there already in 1992, so you may think that I perhaps need to be institutionalized by this time, but the MOOT has become an institution. There are many great ideas on our continent, but it is something to say that for 26 and now 27 years, an idea has consistently been applied. There was no year that the MOOT did not take place. And this has only been possible because the center had been fortunate to work with partners in partnership across the continent. And the main partners had been the partners that also uh, co-present a master's program in human rights and democratization in Africa with us. And the University of Ghana has been part of that process for many, many years. And we um, thank them uh, through the dean, through the university, the vice chancellor for the support over many years. The MOOD brings together participants from Francophone, Anglophone, and Lusophone Africa. So it tries to bridge the colonial divides. It tries to be inclusive of the continent. And over the 26 years past, the Mood Court competition has literally taken place from Cape to Cairo. It was at the university in Cairo, the American University in Cairo. It was in Cape Town, the University of the Western Cape. It has been to the furthest eastern part of our continent recently, and that is Mauritius, the University of Mauritius. And it's been to the furthest western part, which is Saint Louis in Senegal, the University of Gaston Baja. So it is great that all the regions and all the peoples are involved. West Africa has hosted the MOOT um, on five occasions, and as you heard, it hosted the MOOT in 2000. And in a sense, coming back in 2018 is also uh, uh, the emergence of the um, MOOT being hosted again at institutions that had hosted it um, once before. So Ghana now becomes one of a very few and a small group of, of, of universities where the MOOT had in fact now and would have been next year hosted twice. So we commend them for not having done so in 2000, but also um, uh, making itself available to do so in 2018. Um, As Professor Kwashiga said, it could have been here already in 2014 and 15, but because of the Ebola crisis, it was um, decided that it should be relocated. And um, in 2016, we also thought about it, but uh, at that stage, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights had its, uh, the African Charter had its 30 years celebration, so the mood was uh, to take place in the Gambia, uh, in Banjul. But due to the political situation, they eventually the mood did not take place there, but that was also thought the mood cannot and should not be in one region of the continent continuously, and therefore in 2017, having thought that the mood would be in the Gambia in 2016, in 2017 the mood was in Mauritius. So I'm saying this just to reiterate that this moment of uh, acknowledging, of signing the MOU finally, making um, the ground ready for the mood in 2018 has is an idea that has been long in contemplation in making with uh, Professor Kwashiga, with Kweju and others here, and we acknowledge their contributions and we look forward to how this will come to fruition. So we um, at the center are privileged and we look very much forward to co-hosting the 27th Moot Court competition with the University of, Gam uh, of Ghana here in August 2018. The Center for Human Rights is clearly associated with the Moot Court competition, but many people say that we also see associated with books because we have our own university press in the Faculty of Law as a center, and we disseminate information and publications around the continent. So I thought it's appropriate in this spirit that I should also come with books. So um, symbolically, I'll just say there before me on the uh, way I was sitting, there are some uh, uh, volumes. We have brought a full set of law reports, of law journals, of a journal on disability people's rights uh, to donate to the faculty and uh, that just reinforces the collaboration that we have with them. <laughs> Lastly, looking forward then to a truly pan-African event in 2018, here in the country that really has rooted the idea of pan-Africanism. 
I also, in conclusion, would like to hand a small token of our gratitude to the Dean, the Vice-Chancellor and the Provost. These are books that have not been printed uh, by the Pretoria University Law Press. They are about um, icons of South Africa and we hope that these will be uh, also inspirational, interesting to you. <laughs>